I'm really curious about how you got started in all this. How did you first get uh, involved with uh, 3D printing? Well, I, I've always been really handy and built stuff. Um, and when I found out about the RepRap project in uh, 2009, I decided, hey, I can do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I started collecting old printers and stuff and managed to build this monstrosity. Wow. <laughs> And it prints really beautiful prints. Mm -hmm. um, it's gone down to 100 micron layer heights and okay. done really well. Mm -hmm. I then, you know, built the standard Prusa Mendel, which is the most popular printer you can probably find right now in the RepRap world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I had that for, oh, about a year, really. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually printed with it almost exclusively for about six months. And then I went on holidays and I wanted to take it with me and, you know, it was portable, it wasn't the worst thing, but mm -hmm. it doesn't really fit in a trunk well, it, it, it's easy to damage or bend the rods. Um, mm -hmm. So I decided to design this little one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's printed in little tiny cubes, uh, 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter each. Okay. So they actually fit within its own build envelope allowing me to actually print this entire thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to avoid having to find belts, which you can't get everywhere in the world, I use herringbone gear, so there's no backlash. Mm. Uh, and to avoid the belts internally, there's actually high-tension cables. They're a braided... What is, uh, I can't remember the name of the stuff. Uh, okay. it's, a, it's a high strength the fabric fishing line, really, mm -hmm. and it's actually quite accurate, it's more accurate than a standard belt, because the belt actually has some flex, once that's under tension, it's gone, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I've managed to go down to an easy 50 micron, where it prints really high quality, I've gone even lower to the 10 micron range, Wow! wow. but the details do start to have problems. In of, that course, size. of course, of course, of <laughs> course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's actually really fun. It's really mm -hmm. made me enjoy doing something again in some sense. Uh -huh, yeah. You have to share and contribute. It's always evolving. I don't think there's been a day when there hasn't been something new happening in the world of open source 3D printing. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's just fun. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, that that that's fascinating. So you went from uh, being able to print itself to the current configuration, which includes the uh, what do I want to say, plexiglass or vinyl uh, panel? Yeah, acrylic or plexiglass. Plexiglass okay. is just a name brand. Sure. Um, sure. Yeah, that was simply because the time it takes to print one of the printable cases is a great deal. I don't haven't actually ever timed the case. I with you know building prototyping replacing parts it's, it took a while <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but then all of a sudden when the pictures were released everyone wanted one and I thought well there's no way you can <laughs> actually manufacture these at any rate so I decided hey I can just build a new case and reuse everything inside so that's how the, uh, the acrylic laser cut version came about mm -hmm. and it does make it easier to assemble. There's, uh, I think, 32 extra bolts in, in the case alone on the other one, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just because it's all little pieces. Right. Uh, and it, I think it looks better. Um, mm -hmm. I just love being able to see the insides. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah visually, uh, I like the uh, acrylic uh, version, though yeah. the uh, solid version is very impressive. But you can't see what's going on inside uh, as easily. You, you don't have the visibility. Exactly. Yeah. And I still wanted to make sure every single part that's inside of this could work inside of that. It, mm -hmm. The entire idea was, you know, you start with this and mm -hmm. you can have, you know, ten of those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why not? They, they're quieter, they're faster than a large printer, so you can actually print more parts with a couple of small ones than you can with one large one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it actually reduces failures in some sense. With a large printer, you try and print a 
whole bunch of things at once, and if the power goes out or your dog pulls the cord, it's happened before, uh, you lose everything that you're building at once. Right. On a small printer, you just print one at a time, and mm -hmm. if something ever fails, it's only a small little bit that you've ever lost. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even on a large printer, I only ever printed one thing at a time because of that. You, it, you just never can predict something when it's running for 12, 15, 20 hours. It, mm -hmm. it, it's risky. Right, right, right. And the limitation being the 100 by 100 by 100 uh, space, right? Yeah, but that limitation is a partly a, a physical limitation of the properties of the plastic. Mm -hmm. but when we're trying to print any larger, we get a lot of shrinkage because the, the bottom layers are cooled, the top layers are cooling, so it's always trying to pull upwards. And mm -hmm. when you print any larger, it's a real gamble whether or not it will turn out. Mm -hmm. um, and most things will actually fit on a 100 by 100 by 100 build platform simply because of that. People will always cut things out to fit them in that small envelope. Mm -hmm. I have done my fair share of large printing and mm -hmm. I've probably wasted more plastic than I've actually <laughs> used properly in that way. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What, was the, the, what was the build platform for the original uh, cupcake? Uh, you know, offhand? It was uh, 100 by 100 by I think 110. Mm -hmm. And technically, although I'm, I'm releasing Tantalus as 100 by 100 by 100, it has the capability of going to 120 tall. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just, the hot end right now is longer than would allow that to happen. Sure, so sure. Mm -hmm. there is a, a new hot end from the same manufacturer of this hot end that will be short enough to give it 120 millimeters of height. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. slightly larger than the original cupcake. Okay. Uh, the... The thing of Matic now is 125 in one direction because it was designed to have the conveyor belt on it, so they had to have a little bit more travel. Right. But right. otherwise, it's still the same. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about that in, in terms of your uh, project online, uh, that people may look at that and think that the build space is uh, smaller comparatively when it's actually the pretty much the same. It's that the total printer is more compact. Exactly. Uh, one of the members of the local RepRap users group, have, or a few of them, have a MakerBot thingamatics, mm -hmm. and the printed tantal will actually fit through the hole in the top of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how small it is. Um, <laughs> there is actually a picture by him online, uh, johndealer.com, and it shows his thingamatic, his prusa, and his tantal. It's all side by side, and they get smaller and smaller and smaller. Right, right, right. But I think that people associate smallness with uh, being able to produce smaller <coughs> parts or that the build space is smaller, where, where that isn't true. This is just more compact. I would call it a compact printer rather than a smaller printer. Yeah, that would be a better uh, term for it.